That's really what we need. We need a good Predator film. We haven't had one in over a decade, okay? The Predator franchise has been plagued by a lot of not just mediocrity, but some really garbage films, including the... Hello, everybody, and welcome back to WAKA Geek Talk Radio. I'm Nathan, reviewing Prey, the Predator prequel, set 300 years ago, dealing with a Comanche tribe encountering, and French fur trappers encountering the Predator in 1719. And Predator has a very special place in my heart because I interned and worked for Silver Pictures on the Warner Brothers lot years ago, the company that made the original first two Predator films. And this is a picture of me um, about 20 years ago. The picture with our Predator from, I think, Predator 2 that we had in the office in the, in the lobby. It was awesome. And uh, it was a great internship. And then I got to come back and work in 2001 there and see a lot of movies behind the scenes, as well as proposed Predator 3 ideas that obviously did not get made because Silver Pictures did Predator 2 at the end of, of 1990. And then there was, another, was no other Predator on screen really until 2004 whenever Paul W.S. Anderson separate from Silver Pictures did uh, Alien vs. Predator. All right now I have to say too this movie is better than the trailers make it look and it I was pleasantly surprised by it. I was also surprised by the insane amount of division and talking and drama over this movie before it ever got even close to being released. It was weird online with all the different geek sites, all the speculation about the movie, and it was really like divided camps. Like on the very far right, I had people who were saying, oh, it's going to be some woke garbage where they're going to, you know, just, you know, try to do this, some Mary Sue female character to save the Predator franchise. And then on the far left, I had people saying, oh, it's going to be this awesome Native American story featuring a Native American woman, so you have to watch it and you have to like it because you got to support it. And I even had other things like in the... Like a vegan friend posted online <laughs> uh, where they were saying, I heard there's a lot of animal deaths in this movie, so don't go see it. Don't support movies that have animals killed on screen. Okay, no, no real animals were hurt in this film, by the way. First of all, none of these people had seen the movie yet. And secondly, none of the questions they were asking, as interesting as they might be, had anything to do with whether or not this was a good movie, a good Predator movie for the Fred Predator franchise. That's really what we need. We need a good Predator film. We haven't had one in over a decade. Okay, the Predator franchise has been plagued by a lot of not just mediocrity, but some really garbage films, including the last one that came out in 2018. Okay, so a lot of people, I think, were skeptical of this movie. Forget the politics stuff. I think they were skeptical because of the track record. I mean, is it going to be another Terminator franchise? Because Terminator, another 80s franchise, also starting with Arnold Schwarzenegger, the last couple chapters of the Terminator franchise have been pretty bad. Genesis was just plain weird, and Terminator Dark Fate was a big middle finger to the fans, an insult, if you will. But let's talk about this movie, because this movie, actually, I liked. It is a good Predator movie. And if you if you already, if you didn't like it, or you're hesitant, or you're on the fence, please listen to my review. Now, I'm going to do spoilers, but at the very end, so I won't do them right away. I'll warn you. All right. Obviously, as you know, this is set, uh, you can tell just from the trailers, this is set 300 years ago, about 1719. Uh, Amber Midthunder, very well cast here, plays Naru, and she wants to be a hunter like the guys in the tribe and go through this rite of passage where they face and take down a prey that thinks that they're the predator and that they, you know, that they're being hunted and they hunt the the hunter animal. Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying. Anyway, and, and she gets a pushback from her brother, who's played really well here by Dakota Beavers. I think this is his first movie role, and he's great. And, and none of the other guys in her tribe. And But all that aside, what's interesting as a Predator movie is this is when you get the what goes back to the early... This is the first thing I liked about this movie, is that it goes back to the early Predator films, especially one and also two... When it comes to the concept of there's violence going on in the original movie, you've got the stuff in the jungle and then you've got the violence of the gang wars in the second Predator movie. And into that scene, the Predator comes, sneaky, trying to kind of hide himself amongst the other killing going on. And in this case, you've got a lion and bear attacks on the tribe of Comanche. 
one of their tribesmen goes missing after hunting a lion. And there's these French fur trappers that are brutally killing uh, the, the, the buffalo in a, in a wasteless, wasteful method. But in the middle of that, in comes the predator. And Naru begins to see on her own hunts that maybe the evidence that's there points there's some other force. Somebody, some other thing is killing the people and the animals, for that matter. Now, I also like this because it goes back to some of the classic predator concepts like that, but it does it in by taking the predator story into a whole new setting. And this is kind of what Predator 2 and Predators tried to do. Yes, and I don't care whether or not you like the execution of either of those movies. I admit, I like Predator 2. I really did. And I know there's its lovers and its haters. And there's the Predators has its lovers and its haters. But both movies did something that was cool as a sequel. And then that was... They took the story in the jungle from the first movie, and the fir Predator 2 took it out of the jungle to the concrete jungle, if you will, of the city. And Predators also did the same thing. It took the Predator concept, but flipped the idea where instead of a Predator coming to secretly invade Earth, we've got them bringing people from Earth to a Predator planet. This movie does the same thing. takes the idea and the concepts of the classic Predator movies and brings them into a new area. Here you've got it in a primitive setting where there's no machine guns this time. But here you have primitive weapons and the Predator is more primitive too. And his weapons and his look. And some people have liked this and some people have hated it. I actually kind of liked it. It was a, it was still recognizable as a Predator, but he was different and he was cool, I thought. He's a master of the weapons he has, but they're not all the weapons you see in the others. For example, one of the things I love here is you still got the little laser ray triangulation, you know, target. But instead of firing this, like, plasma cannon that will go through anything, he fires these, like, arrow-like missiles that are kind of, will track where the, the red thing tells them to go if they miss their target. Like, they're heat-seeking, you know. He also has this, like, kind of saw-like shield. He has a plate on his head that doesn't look like one from any, doesn't have the typical eyes of the previous movies, but it has, it looks kind of like a bear skull. I'm not, I'm not sure. I need to check if it is supposed to be a bear skull, but it looked kind of like it was a bear skull. Another thing I liked about this movie that was a surprise was there's a lot more action than the trailers let on. This was a good trailer. The trailer didn't give enough, didn't give too much away. Um, for example, one thing, the French trappers in here who come in, they're pretty, you know, like almost barbarian level French trappers, kind of stereotypical in that respect. But they come in and they f mix it up with the Predator a lot more than you get from the trailers. And not only that, the Predator fights several animals you don't see and other and Native Americans. And, and almost everybody I know liked this movie, but I've seen a lot of interesting discussions online. The CGI with the budget was not up to snuff all of the time. And I would say that is true. There are several scenes where I think they needed a better CGI. But honestly, that isn't the problem most of the time. The movie still stands as a good film regardless. And the few scenes that the CGI doesn't quite do it for, it doesn't, because the movie's got a good story and good characters and a good setting and good pace and good feel and otherwise good cinematography of the landscape, it doesn't um, ruin the film. It's still good. Now, one other inconsistency that I will say that I is a, a fair one, in, and this is something I've mentioned before, before this movie even came out. There is what I call the consistent inconsistency in the Predator films. And that is, it's pretty much a consistent problem that the vulnerability of the Predator to human weapons will be inconsistent. It seems like it changes from film to film and sometimes changes within the film. An example is one of the ones I like, Predator 2. has one of the worst scenes where you've got Bill Paxton's character in the subway and, and other people shooting. There's so many bullets here in a small space, they've got to be hitting the Predator. And he fires at him several times, point blank. And the Predator doesn't bleed. Okay, that's ridiculous. That wouldn't happen. They've already established in the first movie. And in other times in the same film, that if you shoot him and you hit him with a gun that powerful, it will cause him to bleed. And in here, I think one of the problems I noticed was he gets injured a lot by people. He gets stabbed, sliced, and shot. And only bleeds a little bit here and there. And seems to recover from even pretty big wounds. He's a pretty tough Predator. And I will also acknowledge that here that the... French trappers that are shooting him with guns, they're using very, you know, they're using old school guns. 
that from a distance aren't going to be as accurate or as powerful as like a machine gun. With Now, one of the things I kind of wish had been the case is I kind of wish this movie had had a slightly bigger budget for the CGI and then had been released theatrically. And I've heard that from a lot of people. Like, why wasn't this released theatrically? Did they not believe in it? What's the deal? Well, first of all, if they didn't believe in it, you can't completely blame them because Predator as a franchise, just like Terminator, has had a lot of missteps. Not as bad as Terminator, although that last Predator movie was pretty bad. So I looked this up some more, and this article here, Prey director uh, Dan Trachtenberg reveals Disney's decision to send Prey to streaming as opposed to theaters is to help boost Hulu's viewership. Okay, well, that's not really a satisfactory answer for a lot of the fans. Now, he does go on. In this article, he says, too, he says that if it was released in theaters, it would have gone to HBO as there's other 20th century pictures had a deal in the past with a prior contract that Disney has to abide by. And he says, I mean, look, we made it to be a big theatrical experience, which he did. Clearly, by the way it shot, it was. And on the downside, it's not being released that way. So you can't see it in a theater but on the upside the thing you're getting straight into your living room is a giant theatrical experience um yeah i get it i still would have readily rather had this be in the theater now i will say one of the pushbacks i have seen some people talk about when they came up to this whole thing in advance about oh this is going to be another mary sue movie etc well you know no it's not but this Naru character is a true, strong female character uh, in the vein of Ripley and Sarah Connor and, you know, Princess Leia, the ones I grew up with that were awesome. You know, some people today act like, oh, strong female characters are a new thing. I'm like, what are you talking about? I grew up with those characters like that all the time. We all love them. All the guys love them, too. And we still do. I think and they were good characters. And I think the problem is some of the studios that have taken over and, you know, companies have taken over franchises and they seem to think that strong female character means super powered or good at everything or without faults. And these end up making kind of boring characters. You know, most people know this and this is what's going on. But if you say that, then suddenly you're being called a sexist. Friends, I have two female friends who are movie critics and more successful than what I'm doing, and they are just tired of this. Like, strong female character in name only because it's because an executive says they are. Well, no, show us they're strong. Are they strong in character? That's what someone's journey, how they survive, what they go through, how they overcome, how they become better. That's what makes them strong. And you know, I mean, look at Sarah Connor in the first Terminator. She didn't come across like today's typical strong female character, but she grows. She goes on a journey because she's strong inside more than she realizes and it's awesome you know ripley doesn't know what the alien is no one on the ship does but she watches she learns she's smart she's observant and she sees what the other people do wrong these are real strong female characters and this girl naru here uh played by, again by amber Midthunder, is and part of it is she's observant now she may not be as strong or as trained as some of the male hunters in her tribe but she uses other things. She practices on her own. She's intentional about it. You know, she has a lot of defeats in here. She goes through some crap in here. I mean, she gets... She, first of all, she goes on a lion hunt early on that does not go the way she's planning to. And her brother has to basically save her. And she learns and she's observant. So she learns how to pay attention to what other people do wrong when facing the predator. She sees a lot of people get killed. And she learns. She also sees what it, how he uses his weapons. She doesn't understand his weapons necessarily, or you know the technology, but she sees how they work. And that's something the movie does well too. They set up chances for her to see what how things work, so that they can pay them off later. They don't just come out of nowhere later. And I really respected that about this movie and its writing. I've one of the weak criticisms I've heard that I can understand. They say, "Oh, okay, well, she's too smart." I mean, if these Native American tribes are supposed to be such good trackers and hunters and everything, how come they didn't notice, you know, the predator being an anomaly? Well, part of it is to where what she witnesses that they they don't, but also, I mean, there does tend to be a little bit of a bro culture and part of it where some of the younger tribesmen are, you know, they they kind of tease her. She's kind of like, "Oh, she's the girl that wants to be a hunter like us," you know. And I think that could, that's existed in a lot of societies a lot of different times, not just now, not just then or there. 
And I think that's part of it. But they're not stupid. Like, they're pretty brave. When it, when the Predator shows up, they, they stand up against them even when they know they may not live. Some people have all said that. I'm not, I'm not going to get to spoilers yet, but they'll be in just a second. One of the other things I have heard, too, is that, well, in the finale, last whole 20 minutes, she, she gets away by luck several times. You know, yeah, but not any more than has happened in the past. I mean, I'm sorry, guys. Let's be honest. Okay. In the first Predator movie and in the second, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny Glover got away by the skin of their teeth several times where they could have easily died. So that's not a new thing. And in here, the way they do it, um, I, I, I can see that, but I, I didn't have a problem with it. And I think if you really have a problem with that, you're being really picky. If you have, if you're on the fence about the movie, watch it. Watch it in the best with the best TV and sound you can. If you're not a Predator fan, though, it's still, uh, or you're not like a you know major fan of Predator, it's still a good movie. And if you, it, it fits. This fits a lot of this. This this is a movie, good movie for a lot of people. If you want to see Native Americans treated well in a movie in a situation they're not usually in, that's cool action. This is a good movie for you. If you are looking for strong female characters in films, this is a good movie for you. If you're looking for a great dog that's an awesome help, it's a great dog in here that helps out the movie. It's a good movie for you. So it's a good movie across the board. It's good for the brand, too. All right, now, spoilers. So you have been warned. You have been warned. How many ways could I say that? You have been warned. You have been warned. Okay, spoilers. So the ending of this movie is something people are talking about. And I rewatched it. Just because, and I probably rewatch the whole movie again soon, but I rewatched it because I wanted to look at some of the details again. So, as just when Naru feels everything is lost, you know, she finds that last surviving fur trapper, one of these people, these French fur trappers who it captured her brother, captured her, and basically because of their actions and ended up in her brother's death. She's pissed off. And she uses the fur trapper as bait. It's a clever scene. And then there's some nods to that final fight that Schwarzenegger has in the jungle in the first Predator. And here you've got some throwbacks to that. She sets up some sharp traps. She's got things ready, different things in case something doesn't work. But she first makes him angry and disoriented so that he goes after her ruthlessly. And I know people have said, well, he kind of falls into her traps too easily. Maybe, yes, but he also is angry, he's wounded, he's disoriented, and this is the classic thing predators do. The main problem, the main weakness of the predator creatures is their arrogance and their confidence, their overconfidence at least, in being the apex predator. They know they're from another planet, they know that they're in a, a more primitive planet, they always feel like no matter what this other planet can throw at them, they will win. And if they can't that win, they have a little device on their arm they can blow up the whole area with to get revenge. So they are ruthless in that respect and arrogant. And here he's angry, he's arrogant, and he goes after her. And, you know, the last trap she has, which everyone talked about, is that she's got the helmet set up. Because you, you find out the helmet is what shows the guidance for where the missiles are going to go. And because he gets in, he fires the gun, the missiles, if they miss her, if they hit her, fine, but if they miss her... They're going to go around and go to where the target is, which hits him directly in the quicksand. And by the way, hooray for quicksand being back in movies is a threat. That kind of, I grew up with tons of quicksand in movies and shows, and then they were gone for like 40 years. People have said, well, it's kind of contrived to get him in that exact position. Yes, but that was her last resort. Literally, she had tried everything else. She had spikes. She got his arm cut off. She had jumps out of the tree on him. She shoots him in the back. I mean, she does everything. And the way that she finishes him off, whether it's contrived or not, it's also pretty cool. It's different than any other movie. And it's, so it's original. And it's clever on her part. So I kind of liked it. This is a good Predator film. It is the, it's in my top three Predator movies. All right, that's it for this review. I'm going to do a Predator movie ranking video. Talk about each one of the films. I won't talk too long about the really bad ones. Don't worry. I'm be doing that soon. And if you like this kind of content, these kind of reviews, please do subscribe. Hit the subscribe button there. and Subscribe to our channel. We're trying to grow. If you haven't seen my Comic-Con videos, check them out. I just got back, you know, two weeks ago from the Comic-Con, which is awesome. Check them out. Keep tuning in. And I will see you all next time.